So the seasons are changing, we've had a lot of rain, suddenly we're facing winter conditions now for the next six months here in the UK. There are certainly some, some aspects around the green you need to be aware of that you need to be able to change to still make really good solid contact around the greens and in the bunkers as well. So we're going to go through some of those um, adaptions you need to make and uh, we're going to start with this sort of fairly basic chip and run from a fairly flat lie okay with a bit of green to work with now we'll talk about club selection in a minute but if you want to stick to using a little bit of loft i mean through the summer using loft because you need to create more spin because the greens are quicker and, and, and firmer so i'm going to use a 56 degree here but the key here is avoiding too much ground contact so when the ground gets really soft like it is here you can see how it's just if you if you start hitting down too much how it's just going to totally explode so it's making sure that that club is brushing the ground. Now you can do it two ways. You can stick to the release one, which I, which I teach, which is a little bit more slightly steeper angle of attack. You're hitting down, okay, a little bit, slightly descending blow with the hands uh, releasing here to the, to the front hip. And that works really well. Just be conscious, I think, mentally, when golfers start sitting on these wet lies, when the ball's, the ball's down on these soft lies, the golfer starts to drive the handle down. Okay, and then attempt to try and get the back of the ball first. And that's what we don't want because you start driving the hands down too steeply, you're going to get an awful lot of that because the ground's so soft, it's just going to give way. So the release one is where I would go for this shot, but we need to make sure we're still turning, which encourages the hands there to release a little bit more skyward, okay, which just allows the club to still brush the ground with that release one rather than the hands driving down too steep okay so just like this okay so we're going to keep moving this time through the ball there's a nice scarring of the ground okay but never going to get too concerned about that club digging into the wet turf because i'm not throwing the hands down okay i'm releasing the club okay hitting slightly down on the ball but i'm moving my left side which encourages the handle to keep moving up rather than driving down okay so that's important i think more mentally than anything when you sit on the ground don't drive into it if you wanted to hit a slightly softer landing shot, you can still play a release two from these lies. In fact, in many ways, I prefer that. Um, if you're shallow enough with the, with the impact, you can still play these really easily, okay? So I play the ball now on this, on this left foot. I wanna really make sure my right arm stays nice and soft. I don't wanna be driving this arm forward at all. And just feel like you're just gonna slide it through the wet turf. It works really easily, arguably, I find that a little bit easier than going low because I know that the bounce is still going to be sliding. Okay, and I've got a bigger margin for error. So let's try that again. I've released two. Ball forward, brush the ground. And that's a perfect example of hitting a little bit heavy, but the bounce still works through, through the turf even though it's really wet. So a couple of ways to think about playing those shots. You can play your release one, but make sure you're not driving the hands down, which is what kind of subconsciously you want to do make sure you keep opening your chest up through the ball so the handle doesn't get too low or play the release two ball, ball forward in the stance and you're just sort of picking it off the top there okay so different options no right and wrong find what works best for you if you are going to stick to that sort of release one chip and run just go to less loft okay so if i'd have used my nine iron which i've got here for this chip and run two three months ago that ball would land on the green and it would run way past the pin over the green into the rough because the greens were firm and they were fast. When the greens are this soft and it's slightly uphill, I've got to make sure the ball gets there. So I'm going to use less loft. I know the ball's going to stick more because of the ground condition, but I'm going to use a nine iron. It's a narrower sole. It's going to be a slightly shallower angle of attack. All in all, it's just a much, much safer, safer shot. So I'm going to land it around, around a yard on. I don't need to worry about it running out too far. Let's do my normal chip and run style shot. There you go, yard on, and it's running out there to two feet past the hole. You can see it's never worrying about that ball spinning too much. That's the danger this time of the year of using your sand wedge too much. Nice smooth swing, land it just on, and there we go, runs out to the hole, okay? That's probably the simplest way to do it. If we've got more green, you might want to use a seven iron, all depends, but in this situation, a 9-9 in the summer, totally the wrong shot. 9-9 now was soft, probably the right shot. Because what I really dislike seeing golfers do is playing a nice shot, like I've done there. They can see that spin is pulling up, so that was a 56 degree. It's stopped about 8 feet short of the hole, because I'm just using too much loft onto a soft green. Okay, So you've got to really start thinking about 
what loft, what ball speed you need for the ground conditions, okay? So we'll now play some shots from the rough. So we're in the rough. Now, in the winter, obviously the grass doesn't grow much. So we don't tend to get the height of the grass, but what we do get is it's wet, it's claggy. Okay, there's a lot of moisture around, which is gonna slow the club down. It's gonna make the grass play a little bit thicker, a little bit heavier. So we don't change too much in terms of technique, but you do need to really feel like, grip it nice and tight in your, in your left hand here around the back of the finger there. Feel like you're gonna hit down a little bit more. Okay, now we've got to make sure we're going to get a little bit nearer the ball uh, this time of year because the ground is soft, it can give way in the rough. So, recommend here in terms of setup, depending how much this is sitting down, this is sitting down, I would say, a medium amount. So, I'm going to play the ball back of centre, get the stance wider, kind of wider than the hips, open the face a little bit, but really grip hard in that left hand, as I said. And then from there, you see you can now get your chest in front of the ball. So, this is a steepening ingredient. This is going to allow you to set the club up earlier and come down okay, with a little bit more speed, which is what you need out of this type of wet grass, thick uh, grass condition, okay. So I've got the 56 here, okay, all about getting a good strike out of these lights. So I'm wide, I'm forward, I'm gripping tight in my left hand. And from this setup, that's gonna encourage me to swing up uh, nice and steep here. It's encouraging me to come down, it means I'm gonna miss most of the grass behind the ball, okay, and I can hit just behind it, just behind it, and then pop it up. Okay, so you can see there's a good strike there, okay. Got it there to a couple of feet. You can see how the divot has got deeper as it's got longer. That's because this time I am wanting to hit down. I do want my handle to come down a little bit more out down into the rough because I've got to really make sure I'm getting down and steep from these lies. And that's how you that's how you pop those out. Now, sometimes you'll get a line there off where it's sitting down a little bit, so it's not totally buried. Um, so we don't need to get our steep into that. And let's say uh, we're going to go, we'll go for the same pin actually. Now when it sits down a little bit, so you don't see it as steep. So this is where I would now start to play my toe down shot. So I'm going to put the toe down, handle higher, aim a little bit to the left, stand a bit closer. And then you can start swinging across. And that sort of just minimizes how the rough grabs the club because the toe is acting like a scythe as it brushes through the grass. Okay, so this is nice when it's not quite as, as uh, buried. Toe down a little bit, out and across. You can see the, the ball there has come out softer. You can see the divot is nothing like as steep. It didn't need to be. So I can just work, slice the toe across, get the ball coming out of a little bit more control. Okay, so that's how you deal with the rough. So when we are faced with upslopes, wet upslopes, this can be a really challenging shot and I see a lot of golfers do this what they'll do is they'll lean into the slope okay they'll take it back and then they'll come down and they'll enter it as if the, the ball's sitting on a level lie this way so what's happening there is the club is going underground and it digs in so this is really common that sort of shot there so if I'm on an upslope I certainly don't want that so what I'm going to do to counter that is I'm going to play that ball forward and I want to release two soft landing shot Okay, and I'm actually going to feel as well like I'm slightly drawing the ball, just to shallow it a little bit more. So I'm making sure the club is never going into the slope. It's always going up and with the slope. So I'm going to aim a touch to the right. I'm going to swing slightly inside. I'm going to release the shaft, but also release the toe a little bit just to help it through the slope. And I could do that all day. It's a hugely, hugely repeatable technique off the scariest of wet upslopes. So slightly in, a little bit of draw, okay? And it's a technique that you can't really do wrong, okay? In, and there we go. Okay, so that's the, that's the uh, tight lie on a wet upslope. It's making sure that you feel a bit more of a draw feel. So now we'll go behind and you see the path a little bit more from the downline angle. Okay, so rather than standing uh, slightly open, I'm going to stand a little bit to the right there. The ball position is forward. I'm going to swing back on my toe line. I'm going to release the shaft back to the belt buckle, release two. But I'm going to turn the toe at the same time, working the club up the slope. Give myself that little draw feel. So when you're in a position like this where you're under the green, 
very little green to work with. If, if this was summer and the lie was okay, remember the key is the lie. The lie tells you what shot to play always, what angle of attack to use. If we had a nice summer lie there and the ball was sitting up a little bit, we'd use a release three here. We'd use the, the 60 degree and we'd release it, let the bounce land behind the ball, pop it up, okay? Now, this time of year, I really wouldn't recommend you do that because the ground's gonna give way too much, okay? It's very difficult with a 60 degree full lob shot with a speed as your club's entering the ground, it's gonna give way. It's okay when you're doing your little short greenside ones to release it more and, and use the bounce behind the ball, but um, for, the, for these lob shots, it, it, becomes, it becomes tougher. So I would recommend you approach this perhaps at looking at using a gap wedge and playing a release one with a little bit of draw. So let the toe turn over and you're sort of just trying to work that up the slope a little bit and sort of get around it that way rather than going high. So really think about other options. But let's say there is no other options. You might be going over a bunker or what have you, okay? So same sort of thing, wet lie. I don't fancy using the trailing edge of the bounce. I don't fancy a release three from this lie. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play the ball position forward and I'm going to do my release one okay but I'm just going to hold the loft which will not get the ball coming out um, quite softly but the spin will be up a little bit and you stop it more from spin rather than land angle so we have the ball on the front foot release one still get a bit of height still get quite a bit of spin and actually manage to keep that short the hole so remember there's always two ways of stopping the ball primarily from spin or from land angle okay so we're trying to ramp the spin up here a little bit by getting these these grooves more sort of into the ball with a release one so i've got the ball a bit further back and i'm coming in this way to get the spin as opposed to summer i want to get the ball landing softly from land angle and releasing it more this way under the ball for it to go up okay and land softer from the angle as opposed to the spin so soft soggy lie don't fancy releasing it front foot hands forward keep them in front and then we can still get some control playing that release one with a 60 degree okay just keeping that loft on through impact so when you do get these really wet muddy lies you don't fancy getting any club on the ball maybe lacking confidence or it's just so wet you just don't you don't think it's achievable then a hybrid is a really good option i've got number four hybrid a bit of loft's probably a good idea if you have got several different hybrids in the bag if you haven't use whatever you've got um, use a putting grip down the grip, almost onto the graphite, nice tall hands, narrow stance, and just make your putting stroke. The wide sole and the hybrid will just brush through the ground really easily. You don't have to worry about this digging in whatsoever, and the ball will ping off quite, quite quickly off the, off the hybrid's base. So just make your regular putting stroke that you think you need to get to that, to that pin. And you can see how very easily it works up, well, nearly went in, how it works up that slope, okay? No danger whatsoever of hitting this heavy, it just works up there, nice and close to the hole. So a really legitimate option if you don't fancy the lie. So if you're fortunate enough to get in the divot and there is no fairway placing, then there's no release in the club here. You wanna have no release whatsoever. You wanna make sure you are driving that handle down. You are driving that leading edge down to get that club into the back of the ball. Use your most lofted club and just see if you can stun it and get a bit of spin. So I've got this right outside the back foot, a little bit of hinge, I'm gonna hold that angle, it's gonna come out low because of my release, or lack of release, and we're driving the hands forward. You've gotta also understand that there are some shots that are just difficult to get, to get close, this is one of them. And that's probably about as good as I could do if I wanted to play that low shot. Now there's other options, I could put the toe down, I could sort of swing across it and try and pop it up, but soft, bare muddy lies like that i just always have that back and just try and slam that leading edge into the back of it if you can use a bit of the bank great but make sure the golden rule when you miss greens is don't chip twice get it on the green and two putt right now when you're pitching off really muddy lies okay so you can see how how, how soft this is i don't want to be using a release too i don't want to be swinging the bounce too much because there's a good chance again that the bounce is going to get dumped in the ground there. We've got to be using leading edge. We've got to make sure that the grooves are going to get on that golf ball. Okay, so we want to make sure we're hitting down, slightly deeper divot after the ball. Okay, so we're hitting a little bit more down on it. So certainly using more steepening ingredients here to get the strike. So setup wise, I'm going to play that ball position back of center. 
because I want to flight this down lower. Loft wise, all depends on the pin. I've got a 56 here. I want to go in like mid flight, launching at 26, 27 degrees, okay, which will get the spin up, okay. Also counter it the fact that we, we've gone wet ground, wet club face, wet golf ball, okay. All these things mean you're gonna lose spin, okay. But so you've got to make sure you're trying to drive into the back of this one. So this is hands in front, weight in front. We've still got this pivot line here. Slightly earlier wrist hinge, and we want to make sure we're impacting definitely to that still to that release one position. But because the ball's further back, it's going to have a little bit more shaft lean than normal. The follow through is going to be quite short, it's a punchier shot, okay. But it's the best way of guaranteeing a strike rather than trying to go too high from these lies. Remember, the greens are soft, so that's going to help us out. So, ball back of center, maybe even further back, hands forward, and we're looking for release one kind of punchy follow through. You can hear that, it was definitely ball first, it's gone in, stopped on the third bounce, okay, so, and again, the divot's getting slightly deeper, which tells me, as I'm striking it, the low point is moving further down, away from the, away from the ball, so it's down, rather than releasing it too much, okay, so, let's try that again, so ball back of centre, hands forward, just note the more sawn off, punchy follow through, Okay, launch at 26 degrees or so, and it spins up nice and close. Okay, so you can see how much of golf is about what I call golf in IQ. It's reading the lie. There's no such thing as a bad lie, which is different techniques to be able to look at it, assess it, think about which part of that club do you need to hit hit the uh, hit the ground or the ball with. Okay, now in this occasion from this lie, I want to get the back of the ball first. If we were doing this in June when it was nice and dry. I'd release it a little bit more, okay? Because that allows me, I think, a little bit more forgiveness. It allows me to make sure I can get a softer flight. Um, that that flight there, I've just did there, if we'd done that in June, it would have gone way past the hole. It would have had a big first bounce, okay? But for this time of year with the soft greens, it's perfect. I matched the lie to the ground condition and managed to get it nice and close. So some of the traditional rules where you're always trying to release the club don't always apply, okay, particularly this time of year. You might want to feel like you go to release 0 0.5 or release 0, like you're not releasing it, because you're really trying to make sure that leading edge stays down. It all depends on the lie, okay? Remember, the summer conditions and winter conditions, you have to be able to adapt. Use your golfing IQ to tell you what shot, what release to use for each shot. So the bunkers in winter are a challenge. We get lots of rain, the sand compacts down, like we've had here. We had a big storm yesterday. You can see all the sand has been pushed down. So that means if you go in and use your regular summer summer technique from this sort of summer lie where you're really releasing the club head back to that two stroke three position, really exposing the back of the bounce, which slides under it, allows you to play that soft, high spinning bunker shot. If I give that a go, do you hear that? So what's happened is the trailing edge of the bounce there has hit the sand. You could hear it, was, you could hilly hear it bounce, it's kicked up and I've semi-thinned it, okay? So I've hit it to 25, 30 feet past the pin, okay? And we know that can be a very destructive shot, okay? Particularly if there's, you know, there's less green to work with and you fired it long over the pin or out of bounds or wherever you're going. So when you are faced with these lies that are compact and down, you've got to make sure your impact after the ball is deeper. So this is a much steeper angle of attack for these lies. So I want to see here the divot, rather than the divot staying nice and level, which you would do in summer from soft sand, the divot here has to feel like it gets deeper as it gets longer. And that allows you then to get the club still down and under the ball. Okay, it's gonna come out a little bit lower, but it'll still be loaded with spin. So it'll still be able to stop it. So the setup changes. Are uh, you gonna play the ball just back of center? We're gonna make sure the chest bone is in front feel like your shoulders are leaning down more and you can see just by getting set up more this way that means the angle of attack is going to allow you to get more down okay and deeper after the ball which is the key so really a lot of this is one and lost at address if you give yourself your normal setup here exposing the bounce it's going to bounce we need to make sure it goes this way a little bit of shaft lean down firmly in your left hand okay and there's the setup that allows me to hinge early and come down it's a release one we don't want to be releasing the club so it's a shorter, diggy, hold the loft, follow through. Let's give that a go. You should hear the difference here. I've got a 56 in my hand. It's a reasonably long bunker shot. It's about 20 yards. If I had a shorter shot, say I was going to my bag, I'd use a 60, okay? Um, it also slightly depends on what bounce angle you've got on your club. This is a 10 degree. I'm taking, is it a 10? Sorry, yeah, 10 degree. Okay, and I'm just going to lean it a little bit forward. So I'm taking a lot of that bounce off in, in the address. If you've got a 
really high bounce and you've got a low bounce 60, I definitely use your 60 over that. Like the bounce angle is probably more important than loft really in this uh, in this circumstance. So I've got the right club in my hand. Okay, I'm going to go down, try and listen for this one. We're going to dig down under the ball mark. So you hear that different noise, much more of a thump down. The divot has got deeper as it got further past where the ball was, which allows then the strike to be really efficient. You can see that went a medium flight, but loaded with spin, and it's only a couple of feet from the hole. So I can't tell you how important it is and to be able to adapt, okay, and um, be able to understand how you change your angle of attack, okay. There's no rule, steep or shallow, it all depends on the lie, okay. So I'm gonna go steep again. We're down, I'm leaning left, hinge early, down, release one, hold the loft. And then these tight winter lies are not a problem if you understand that. And the other lie you can get is where it has been freshly raked. There's quite a lot of sand in the bunker, but it's just wet, right? So this sort of example here, okay, there's lots of sand. We know it's heavy, we know it's wet because of the ground conditions we've got. So in this occasion, because it is fluffier, if we do that hitting down deep, release one, this sort of thing will happen. Okay, the ball won't go forward very far because it's just digging in. It's absorbing all the speed of the club head. When you have this sort of lie, you do want to use bounce. So you do want to do your release three. You really do want to feel like you're releasing the club this way. The only thing you've got to change is the speed of your swing. You've got to increase it because the sand is heavier. It's going to absorb the speed more. So do your regular release two stroke three bunker shot but increase your chest speed to keep the club head working through the sand. You can see that works really well, okay? So it's still totally a release three, okay, because of the lie, but we increase the speed of the chest to make sure the, the sand doesn't grab the speed of the club too much. So if that's helped, okay, we've gone through some different shots around the green, some low shots, how to play high shots out the rough, bunkers, pitching, okay? All really key parts of understanding how to adapt to the different conditions, the softer conditions. I know it's difficult for many of you, but I hope that's gonna make it easier. It's gonna improve your golf and IQ, and you, crucially, you're gonna know how to adapt so you can still have a great short game 12 months of the year.